This video is a review of the Elements of Life, topic 1.2 of AP Biology. I'm Mr. W from learn-biology.com, where we believe that success in AP Biology requires feedback and interaction, and we are so sure of our ability to generate your success that your subscription comes with a money-back guarantee. Sign up for a free trial today. So what do you need to know about the elements of life? Carbon, hydrogen, nitrogen, oxygen, phosphorus, and sulfur, sometimes referred to as CHNOPs. Well, the thing is that you don't have to know very much. You won't be directly asked about it, but it's part of the basic foundation of AP Biology. Carbon is the central element in all of the molecules that make up living things. Hydrogen, often used in energy exchange. Uh, we have molecules like NAD and NADH, which show up in cellular respiration. NAD plus is the low energy form. NADH is the high energy form. You see stuff like that over and over again. And also hydrogen as an ion, as a hydrogen ion, a proton, is often pumped around to create energy gradients. It's very important in the synthesis of ATP. It's the basis of acidity and alkalinity, which we just talked about. The nitrogen cycle is no longer on the AP bio exam. As far as I can tell, you don't need to know about this. But the main thing is to know about these atoms in context. Phosphorus is in phosphate groups, which is found in ATP. That's the kind of interconnected cross-topic knowledge that you want to have for success in AP bio. Now on to topic 1.3 monomers and polymers and functional groups. So what are monomers? What are polymers? Um, the basic idea is that three of the four groups of biomolecules, carbohydrates, proteins, nucleic acids, are built from smaller building blocks that are called monomers. So here's a glucose monomer over here. Uh, living things build macromolecules, the big molecules, proteins, nucleic acids, polysaccharides, and that have specific three-dimensional shapes and shape determines function um, by combining these monomers into polymers. And a great analogy, if you hadn't already thought of it, is that the monomers are like Legos. You can combine them in any way to create other structures. And these big structures, the Millennium Falcon that you might have built as a kid or something like that, those are the polymers. And um, here's a note about structural formulas. If you see something like this, you might wonder, like, What's going on at these angles? Every unspecified angle vertex has a carbon atom. And um, that, that's why this is a C6H1206, because there's carbons here, 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 here. Carbon is so central that it's just understood. How do you put monomers together to make polymers? It's a process that's called dehydration synthesis. Everything in biology is run by enzymes, as we'll see in unit three, and what enzymes do is they pull a hydroxyl group over here off one monomer, and it pulls a hydrogen off the other one. So here's the hydroxyl, here's the hydrogen. That water is pulled out, right? Because this is H2O, the water gets removed, and that creates a bond that's right over here. So here we see that between two amino acids, and same thing, so two monomers becoming a larger molecule dehydration, synthesis, easy to remember. Synthesis is how you build things. And dehydration, when you're dehydrated, you lack water. So dehydration synthesis is pulling out a water. Are you asking yourself, how am I gonna get a four or a five on the AP bio exam? It's a good question because it's a hard test. But we have a plan for your success. Go to learn-biology.com, sign up for a free trial, and complete our interactive tutorials and interactive AP Bio exam reviews. We guarantee you a four or a five on the AP Bio exam. See you on learn-biology.com. Now, what about hydrolysis? Hydrolysis is the opposite of dehydration synthesis. Um, in biology, the suffix lice is very important and it involves breaking. So what happens in hydrolysis is that an enzyme, which isn't shown, inserts a water molecule in between the two monomers making up the polymer. And what that does is it breaks them apart. Here we have lactose, which is a disaccharide. I'll review that in a minute. It's a sugar that's made of two simple sugars that are bonded together. You add a water molecule and you get galactose and glucose. What do you need to know about functional groups? In one sense, not a lot. They're not gonna directly appear on the AP bio exam. But in another sense, 
They're very important in terms of you decoding what's happening with the molecules in biology, which means the molecules that might appear on the AP Bio exam or in your course. So let's go through a couple. Phosphate groups, number one over here, they're key for energy exchange, ATP, adenosine triphosphate. Phosphates are also found in DNA and they're what energize DNA monomers as they're put together. This methyl group over here at number two, it's used to silence DNA. It makes molecules nonpolar or hydrophobic. There are a couple of polar functional groups to know about. There's the hydroxyl group at five, the carbonyl group at seven, and they make molecules hydrophilic or water soluble. The carboxyl group, that's at number three, and the amino group, that's at number four, those are essential in amino acids, which obviously have an amino group over here, and they're acidic because they have a carboxyl group. Um, the sulfhydryl group over here at number six is very important in terms of protein structure. It uh, creates a stabilizing bond that holds proteins in a specific three-dimensional shape. And the acetyl group at eight is used to activate DNA through a process called acetylation. So it's kind of the opposite in terms of function from the methyl group that we talked about. Want to learn more? Sign up for a free trial of the website that guarantees your AP Biology success, learn-biology.com, and watch this next video.